Welcome to this week's episode of Azentuary. We left off last time with everyone gleefully jumping into a hole in the ground. We pick up there, sliding. You guys notice first that it is a, a slippery, viscous mud, but as you pick up speed, you notice that it, it's gotten cold. You're sliding on a sheet of ice, and you are accelerating. As you accelerate, you also notice it's so cold, it's starting to burn to breathe and you're realizing there's a this chill that's starting to creep into your bones and just as you think ouch this i can't take it anymore you find yourself launched out into something open you're not sure what's going on but you have the opportunity to make a deck save oh no the opportunity <laughs> Oh, that's that's bad. One sec. Uh, twenty-one actually. <laughs> oh, nice. So Danes is bad. Nice. And do we want to go ahead and roll one for? Ray got twenty-four. Ray. Twenty-four. All right. Well, so. Those yeah, that say got a five. Oh, ouch! So you guys, yeah. you are moving so fast that you slam into the ground. The two deck saves, of course, take half damage, which is thirteen. You take thirteen impact damage as you slam down. But poor Dane lands right on the bad spot in his back and takes a full twenty-seven impact. Good lord. Deck saves are important. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, my sciatica. <laughs> All right. Each of you kind of rolls around feeling absolutely terrible, and you realize. You're alone. None of your companions are around you. You look, you blink, you realize that this darkness just goes on and you are standing on a barren, frozen landscape. So each of us individually are alone? Yes, you landed all in different places. Oh, that's not good. (laughs) That sucks. (laughs) I mean, I could fend for myself. I can just become an animal hunt, but... You, you guys maybe not so much, so... Yeah, especially after taking 26 damage, I can't heal myself. Ah! Uh, so that's why more people should learn either to make potions or learn healing spells or something. Like, <laughs> you depend on me too much and you're gonna see that now and I'm gonna laugh in your face. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Alright. Alright. So it's what a feature of the landscape, huh? Completely. You look around... It is dark. You you search the sky and you don't even see the twinkle of stars, just kind of a dull haze. And you can, after some time of your eyes adjusting, kind of look out, but you don't really see anything as it is right now. All right. Well, uh, Dane will just pick a direction at random and start walking. Because I'm assuming it's really cold. Oh, yes, incredibly cold. So, walking is better than staying in place. Yes, it is. Others? Oh, I'll probably do something similar, but let's see. Gasgross could probably turn into a polar bear and just be fine. Well, no, I used up both my uses of wild shape on the airline. Oh. Yeah, we can't really take a rest because cold and probably get hypothermia. Is there no, like branches or anything around? No, there's nothing but ice. You're on a big, flat, frozen plain. You see what I have. <laughs> Okay. How about this? 
I have a winter on, uh, uh, not winter. I have a blanket on me, uh, in my, like, pack. I'm gonna tie the blanket around my scimitar to make, like, a makeshift torch and light it on fire using produced flame. Brilliant. I love it. All right, do it. A roll for it, or? Uh, sure, let's roll for your crafting. <laughs> Would that be a sleight of hand or like a yeah? How about a, let's just, survival? Do a survival check. There we go. I like that. Hmm, that didn't go so well. That was a nine. <laughs> yeah, it's it's you have a lot of trouble. I mean, it, it kind of works. You were envisioning this tightly wrapped torch that you're able to dunk. You know, something right out of like Last Crusade when Indy, you know, wraps a what was that around a femur um but yep. instead what you what you get is kind of a a loose kind of floppy thing it's more like a flag on you know that you're able to ignite works does its purpose all right once that's set i guess i'll investigate a bit further and see if there's any differences in the different directions all right well you light it and you move around and so others now please make uh perception checks good god uh, ray got a 24. Ooh, nice how bad oh, is it Dane? Dane got a 13. well thank god i actually have pluses on perception Okay, well, that was fine. I was it, I was only looking for a 10, so good job. Ray, you immediately are like, bing! There is a fire in the distance, and I see in there's a slight mound of something between you and the fire, but you recognize the flopping around as, oh, only Kasros flops like that. And, and that's Kasros' gate right there. Yeah. And Dane, you kind of do the same, but you just see the fire and you're like, oh, hey, a non-random direction. <laughs> there you go. I mean, isn't that all you really need? Pretty much. <laughs> all, right. all right. So you continue your... Oh, I so, uh, on the road for a while. Sorry, I couldn't hear that one. I wanted them to suffer on their own for a while. Oh, well, they're they're still far away from you, and you're doing your investigation. You have no idea that they've seen anything from you. True. Oh, so you want to look around, you said? Investigate? Yeah. Uh, investigation rule. That was a nat 20, actually. <laughs> Holy crap. Well, you start investigating and it, it you don't really see much at first you start holding your torch up looking around you can't really make anything out but eventually you're able to differentiate what kind of looks like some footprints moving that direction over there hmm all right i guess i'll follow the footprints cool so you're following the footprints, they're following your light, and I never really gave an opportunity, but uh, Ray, was there anything you were wanting to do? And just walk forward, trying to find what I can. Awesome. All right, everyone, as you're walking, I would like you to make a constitution check. <sighs> Oof. Uh, <laughs> six. Also six. Oh. 11. Oh, Lord. All right. Well, Dane, you're fine, but the others are not. You guys, your lungs are just on fire, and you each take uh, five points of cold damage just breathing in as your lungs are icing up. That's good. Luckily, Dane can uh, breathe through his beard with warm stuff up just enough. Well, yeah. I imagine he's got icicles forming on it. 
Oh yeah, you're starting to look like one of those guys that goes surfing in the winter on Lake Michigan. <laughs> well, that's just wow. Can't we people actually do that? That's dumb. Oh yeah. Y- y- yes, people are dumb. <laughs> We've established this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is canon now. Um <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eventually, the three of you get close enough to realize that it is the other, and you move in to your tight group. There's the flames of the torch are almost completely out. Great. And Alpha is not here. No. You do not see Alpha anywhere. He apparently oh, no. uh, d- did not either. Did not see the the flames or landed somewhere else. But, yeah, you do notice there is kind of a a mound that is near you. And just because I'll let that nat 20 roll through for the, the investigation, those tracks that you were following continue towards that mound. I was like, the rest of the party realize it's me and, like, they rush over. And I'm just like, like they're like, Castro, it's like, you're okay. And I was like, shh. I'm just like still like nose to the ground, like following tracks. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Holding your torch high, at least they can see it. Right. I mean, I'm used to surviving on my own, so I was like, yeah, finally, without those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, hey, I found tracks without you, so. <laughs> Feel your love from here. Well. Hmm. Yeah. What's no. mm-hmm. well, to be fair? Not- everything else is so cold that you—it's the only warmth you get. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, we're all, I imagine, really miserable. So, anyway, so we continue on to the mound. As you approach, and it begins to take shape, you realize that it's an intentional mound. That it appears to have been formed in some way. Because you notice lines begin to delineate. There are what look like steps carved in across the front of it. And a figure standing kind of, let's say, off to the right of what looks to be an entrance near the top of the stairs. Okay. Uh, What does this figure look like as we get closer? As it begins to take shape and you get closer, it appears to only be about three feet tall. A very small figure holding a kind of a a staff for them. It'd be more like a cane for a normal sized person with a red, slightly glowing gem at the top. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Well, we continue to approach as well as you get closer you notice that the figure has not moved is not moving is just standing there in the cold but appears to be a young demon female hmm that's cool anyways all right um Dane uh, is going to kind of stop in front of her and wave at her and say hello. Well, I guess I don't sound like a creep. Mm-hmm. Well, I couldn't sound like hey. Alpha. That'd be weird. <laughs> her eyes raise, but almost like she's looking through you, like you're a, a shade or a specter to her. She looks away without any emotional change. No notation of your presence whatsoever. Yeah, all right. Mm. Well, uh... I'm gonna speak in bis- abyssal at her. Be like, hey, yo, girl, what you doing? That gains some attention. There's almost a an ear that pops and turns to you. Her eye makes its way to meet yours. And... She simply says, I am the guardian here. That is so cold. 
is it a couple of feet or something? Is that like how it translates into <laughs> your realm? You, uh, I won't have you roll for this. Your passive perception is high enough. You notice that when you started climbing, that biting cold got a little easier. And where you're at talking to her, it's not like burning your lungs. It's still cold, but it's not biting cold. And she just kind of cocks her head and says back, You are in the depths of Tartarus. Why would it be anything but cold? Well, no, that's good. It's where we want to be. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Casseros. These are the dinguses that are part of my party. Hello, dinguses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, she's speaking common or still just abyssal? In abyssal. Okay. So they can't understand what she said. So I start laughing, and they're like, oh god, no. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, we need to find... What was it, the item we need to find in Tartarus again? Titan's frozen toenail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll ask her about... Uh, you wouldn't happen to have a Titan's toenail now, would you? As I know, all toenails are still attached to the Titan's. The titans are frozen below. Frozen below. Well, Those very good instructions. Thank you for that. Very good directions. Uh, so they're frozen? Eat beneath the ice. They lay for eternity. Okay. Ask her what she's actually guarding then. Yeah, what are you guarding here then? I am guarding the statue. There's a statue? What statue? In the building behind me. Oh, okay. Uh, should we be worried about this statue, or...? There is no worry. You are not titans. Not titans. Okay. So, just a uh, hypothetical question. Uh, what does somebody need to get to the Titans? How would how would they go about doing that? I do not know. I do not know. So, like, trapped in ice? Like, maybe melting? Could you melt ice? Just a question. Thought. Just thought. I know nothing of such things. The ice always is and always has been. It shall always will be. Is the statue you're guarding in charge of the Titans by any chance? There is no charge. It is merely a statue. Oh, we met many sentient statues. It's always good to make sure. Oh, thank you. We might come back to uh, ask more questions later, but it's been a great help. Thank you for... Uh, speaking with me. Mm. Yes. You're welcome. And she just turns her head back and stares out across the empty landscape. She was nice. Alright, I relay information to the party. And I go, but I would suggest we take a rest here while the cold isn't as bad. It might even be better in the building. Oh, well, it doesn't seem like she wants us in the building. I imagine we're going to have to go in the building to get down to the Titans. I can ask her if we're allowed in the building. Or we could just kind of go in the building and see what she does. It's probably not a good idea. I mean, sure, go ahead. Have fun. Well, I mean, you can. I guess you can ask her. Sure, I'll be like, okay. Actually, we have one more question for you. Um, are we like allowed in the building here? If we promise, like, not to touch anything, the like. She doesn't even move her head. She says, "Yes, of course, you're allowed within." Well, thank you. You're very nice. And onward, men. All right, up inward. We go. 
Inward men. I like that. All right. So I'm assuming it's a little bit warmer in the building. Yes, it is. You find that it is surprisingly warmer. I mean, it's still frozen. It's still like, let's say, negative, I don't know, three or four degrees C. But, you know, it's still balmy compared to what it was outside. Yeah, that that would be. I mean, hypothermia is still a concern, but I guess not as much. Yeah, you're definitely you're not gonna you can breathe here. You're you're not gonna like just freeze to death or freeze to the ground just by existing. Yeah, you know, huh. it, it's definitely right. better. But in any case, you you walk inside, and you definitely feel that that warmth that change as you pass through the open arch doorway, almost as if there is a magical barrier creating the the difference. And inside, the room is purple it is illuminated by what look like swirls up through the ice walls they each glow with different intensities providing enough light to see the room and in the center there's a statue facing away from the entrance you see its back and it looks from the back like a bird hmm Okay. Tell me, when I was talking with that demon girl, did she ever happen to blink? No. Cool. Good to know. <laughs> I have a feeling this is a weeping angel situation. If we're seeing the back and it looks like a bird wings. <clears> hmm. <throat> but it's a case where it has to be constantly watched. And that's why she doesn't blink. Oh. Okay. That's my guess. Could be wrong. But I think that's my guess. Or something or other similar to that. Anyways, I don't trust the statue. I stay far away from it. Do you... I mean, if it does get on a rampage, it'll kill you guys first. Do you at least warn your companions at all, or...? I mean, I have very visible body language of not trusting the statue. If you guys can't recognize that, then you should be on it. It's pretty... Like, if I'm just noping my way out of the statue's range, I feel like you should notice that. I mean, you could roll a perception check. Just to make things interesting. Yeah, I suppose I could. Do I notice? Heh. <laughs> Uh, 12, so maybe not. What does the DM dictate? Oh, I I was letting you guys do that. I wasn't going to dictate it at all. I thought that was hilarious. Like, <laughs> the, way, the way you just metagamed that out was perfect. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I'm going to say that Dane doesn't notice Castros' bi-language, and he's going to move around to the front of the statue just to look and see what it looks like. Cool. Well, you go around the front and you realize that this statue is actually carved completely from ice, just as everything around it. And it appears to be looking at you wherever you go around it because of that cool concave carved eye trick. And the socket reflects the purple glowing light back at you really intensely. But particularly, you notice that it is a cyclopean owl. There is only one eye. Okay. Huh. All right. Well, Dane kind of thinks that that's incredibly creepy. Uh, he's going to investigate the chamber. Sure. Let's see if I can actually roll decent for a change. No, not. Uh huh. Um. 12. Uh, you go around and the only thing you notice is every now and then on one of those little glowing like rivulets that goes swirling up through the wall at, at or near the, the base or end of them 
is almost what looks like a small carved gem. Okay, but there's no entrances or anything else going down. No, you don't find anything like that. Hmm. So it's going to be somewhere else. We can always ask her after we take a break. Like, how to get down. Well, if you're feeling such bad vibes about this uh, statue, are you even going to rest? Well, I mean, she's guarding it, but I don't know how safe we are, like, inside. I don't know, she was very eager to be like, yes, you can go inside. I'm like, I mean, I could always go out and ask her, yo, what's the deal with the statue? Does that happen to do anything, like, specific? I might go back out and ask her. All right, we should, we should go do that. Okay. Be like, hello, lady. Uh, I've come back. Um, just a question. What does the statue do, exactly? Like, why do you need to guard it? I guard it to make sure that it forever cannot see. For if its gaze lands in the right place, the ice will free the titans. Mm -hmm. Oh. So, does it do anything other than that? It It looks cool. <laughs> Good answer. I ask her if there's another way to yeah, get Is there another way to get down to the Titans? I know of no way to the Titans. Okay, well, it was nice talking to you. We're going to chill for a while and there, I hope you don't mind. Bye. There is nothing preventing you. That's true. All right. Good day. Uh, leave her. Come back to the party. Be like, oh, I really liked her too. All right. We're gonna have to cause this statue to melt everything. I'm assuming. Oh, is it warmer near the statue? Like, if we like go up to the statue, is it warmer? No, it is not. Okay. Well, but I was. It, if it looks at the ice, it'll melt the ice capturing the titans. So. Yes, if we free the titans, that sounds like a really bad thing. How else are we supposed to get the toenail, though? I know. I, I'm just, I'm not liking my options right now. We're gonna have to do another genocide-level chaotic act, I think. And by that, I mean we're gonna have to free a bunch of titans, chop the toe off of one of them, and book it. And I feel bad because I like this girl, but I mean, we came all this way. It's been, it's been quite a few days, days, days. We'll say days. It's been quite a few days. It's been like a month about that we've started going down here just for this one item. We still have like another one to get after, this, don't we? No, it's the last one. Oh, it's the last one. No. Yeah. Still, this is not our final endeavor. Either. We have stuff to do once we get this thing, so... Yes, yeah, so then we have to go up to... This I one, I don't care what we have to do to get the it. The Blessed Realms to actually get these uh, forged into some kind of a weapon. No, I think you just have to go to the Forge of Gond. Oh, okay. I thought we had to go, like, up to Valhalla or something again. All right. No, I uh, think you were, done with, you were done with Valhalla. You just had to get it to the Gondian Acolytes so they could start striking the divine forge oh okay all right cool um all right well i guess we will take a long rest right uh okay all right you guys like uh, curl up and make camp and we're, we're probably I mean, gonna have to cuddle for warmth oh yeah right. totally i'd rather um, die <laughs> Harvest not even here. Not even Jeremy is here. Why on earth would I want to cuddle with you guys? You're very you cold. showered in years. You're very cold. I'm good. You might be losing toes if you don't. If you don't. 
But you're a stinky dwarf. Well, yes. I don't you imagine... You bathed in ages. You smell too good either. Maybe. Well, no, I went jet skiing on Alpha the other day. I probably got a little bit of a bath there. Well, so did I. Fine. I'm not happy about it. Anyway, okay. So, <laughs> we huddled together for warmth, much to Castros' disgust. <laughs> which Dane finds funny. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I'm going to have everyone... Sure. Real quick, as you guys sleep and take this rest, give me a wisdom check. Just a <sighs> regular wisdom check. 16. Okay. Uh, Ray left again. Mm. I'll roll for uh, Ray one sec. 14. Got 15. 15. All right. All of you wake up every couple hours to the sounds of muffled screams echoing from deep below you in the ice. Not large voices, but small ones. Almost you know, human, elf, dwarf. Just barely being heard like mouths that have been frozen shut letting out high-pitched squeals. I'm not titan-type screams. No. But you are as a result of that it takes much longer for you to get your rest and you have just nightmares of being trapped within the ice being like you were a frozen and slowly being ground between two ice cubes. Fantastic. But eventually you wake up and you get your, you know, long rest. Cool. Everything is recharged. All right. Um... Uh So we take stock. Um, we Dane's like, "Hey, did you guys hear what sounded like screams beneath us last night?" Vaguely. Okay. Um. So Dane. So I guess Dane's gonna try something. Uh. Why are you trying something? He's going to cast kind of fire bolt in the middle of the floor and see if he can, like, maybe melt a path down. Sure. Wow. Um, good thing I'm next to my companions. Oh, my God. Good Lord. I am rolling really poorly. Okay, so that was decent. That's a 21. All right, you blast at the floor. And where it hits, you kind of see what normally would be, you know, say a firebolt hitting normally would be the size of like a softball. And instead, what you see is something maybe the size of a golf ball. And it hits and a little piece of ice kind of chinks off and rolls across the ground and as you're looking at it you're like huh that's that's odd and then you look back over where you had shot and it's just flat again all right well that's annoying not magically healing ice my one weakness <laughs> make yourself an ice elemental no i only have four basic elements jeez dane well, I'm just... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, okay. I'm really afraid of what we're going to have to do, and I really don't want to do it. That's fair. Well, okay. How about this? How about this? Let's see. You also always tend to assume the worst-case scenario. 
Well, that's because usually the worst case scenario happens to us. It's true. Like the genocide right. of a, two clans of merfolk. Valid, valid. Which technically wasn't our... It wasn't us. It was more so the Leviathan outside, but like, whatever. And we may have provoked into killing everybody else, but well, you know, they're gonna I just So after well, we, before after we after we after we saved them, they put us on trial because they were dumb. So you know, I don't say that's not good. all right. Anyways, so. I mean, Earth Elemental has Earth Glide, so it slides, but that only works for Earth and Stone. And non magical Earth and Stone at that. Um, if. I don't think this would count, but I don't think the ice counts as an object or structure. Hmm. I mean. Not really? It, it'd be hard to justify it. I guess. I mean, if I turn to a fire elemental, I might be able to burrow through fast enough before it reforms, but then I might get stuck in the ice and that'd be a bad thing. That'd be a So... Or I might just slip down and plummet out the bottom of whatever. So... Hmm. Dane's gonna inspect that gem-looking thing that he saw. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, sure. You want to roll another investigation while you're just focusing on that? Yep. Okay. Let's see here. That is a 17. Okay, you examine it very closely. I mean, you see that there are several of them first, and you kind of look around until you find one of the larger ones. And you look at it, and you are like, huh, the shape is exactly the same as is on the head of the staff of the girl standing out front. Okay. Mm. No clue to make that. Um, makes me think that the staff is somehow controlling the gems. That's fair. Uh, I suppose you can go back out and ask Miss Miss Manners what her staff actually does. I mean, she's giving answers very willingly. I, I like that about her. Okay, but, but vaguely. Vague, yes, but, you know, at least she's answering us and not getting suspicious of our actions. She definitely seems to be programmed to do one job and one job alone for it's kind of working in our favor. Uh, yeah, I'll walk back on out and be like, hello, good morning, uh, or whatever time it might be in this plane. Um, I have a question. Uh, what does your staff do? It seems really cool. Uh doesn't do anything as far as I know. I stand here holding it. I lean on it. It is Have a symbol ever... of... Oh. No, no, go ahead. It is a symbol of divine power. Hmm. Have you ever been inside the building here? Or have you just always stood no. outside? I am forbidden from entry. Oh, wow. Well. Seems like you have really crappy bosses, then. Like, what, who they orders to stay here? Well, I personally got my orders from Zeus. Zeus, huh? Huh. Interesting. I don't know Greek mythology well enough. Uh. Hmm. Oh, you may know him as Jupiter. No, no, I know. I think I know who you're talking about. Interesting. So he he's your boss, huh? Yes, he is the lord of the sky and the universe, wielder of the lightning bolt. Yeah. He's an interesting character, isn't he? Mm, yes, quite. You never thought to like, I don't know, maybe just take a break one day. Just I you know, break a few rules just to see, you know. I mean, it's your life. You gotta live it. 
My life is eternal here. All the more reason to go out and do fun stuff. Why should you stay out here for? I say it wouldn't hurt to just walk into the building for like a little bit, just to see. Haven't you ever been curious? Or you can try and no. convince hand you the staff and then she can go take a vacation. That is true. Or I could take over your job here just for a little bit. You can go off, explore the world for a little. I'll have your staff. I'll make sure the statue's garden and all that fun jazz. You know, you have a life, too, outside of work. You shouldn't bring your work home with you so much like this. You know, I think you should take some time and really learn to appreciate your eternal life. Because, I mean, I'm mortal. I don't have as long as you have. I'm already trying to do as much as I can. I suppose I could go down a step or two, see what it's like. See, there you go. Well, I'll try. You want to hold the staff while I do it? Yep, I'll take over your place for you so that that way, like, I, I'm sure Zeus won't care just as long as somebody holds down the floor, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not Releasing the fort, as you say. I'm just going to step down a couple steps to see what it's like. Mm-hmm. So, yep. Hey, here, please. And she hands the staff over to you. All right, I brace myself for whatever the staff might, like wielding the staff might bring, and I grab it from her. Cool. Oh. You grab it, and it feels like a staff. So it's fine. And, yep, it's fine. And she takes two steps down and you actually see kind of a a smile crack for a second and then she looks out into the far distance like she's disconnected from the entire conversation she had with you okay so she's back to like looking off and not seeing anything kind of yeah but, like, with a little hint of joy. Aww. She seemed to be frozen in place, though. Like, <laughs> or is she just chilling? She's just kind of chilling. All right. I'll wait. She, yeah, she deserves you, you... to have a fun time. If this is all that brings her joy, I will definitely let her have it. Cool. Well, you wait and wait, and she just stays there. She doesn't move. She just seems to be... Like, on a vacation in her mind. Oh, good for uh, her. Alright, if you guys want to do something... So, do after this. a while, the teen pokes his head out and goes, Oi! What you doing down there? Me? I mean, holding down the fort? Letting her have a break? Everyone needs breaks once in a while, Dane. Uh, so Dane just kind of shakes his head and it tromps down the stairs. And, uh... Sees Castro's holding the staff. He's like, "Yeah, that looks exactly like the gems inside." Uh, I'm gonna do an Arcana check on. It. Sure. Uh, that is. I can't read my writing. I think that's a 21. Wow. Okay. You do the check, and it's like the gem itself is inert, but everything that's holding it is magic. Like, when you sense it, you feel that Oh, the gem isn't even actually attached to the staff. It's floating slightly above it, imperceptibly, but held in place by magic. Okay. But it is inert, huh? It sense according to your arcana senses, yes. Ah. Like there's no magic there. Interesting. Um, too bad we don't have someone to do a religion check on it. Uh, what is the shape of the gem? I mean, what is it actually shaped like? Um, almost like an eyeball. Okay, naturally. 
let's see. Oh no. Oh no. I think the way we make this thing work is we take the gem from the staff and we place it in, in the socket of the statue. I mean, it seems like our only option. I just feel bad about betraying this girl. I mean, maybe we can help her. Maybe after this is done, she'll be, like, free in a weird way. And we'll, we can take her with us. I mean, she's a demon girl. She probably has some kind of... <sighs> Anyways. Well, you know what you must do. I'm just gonna stand, watch here, and act like nothing's happening. Alright. Uh... Must do something. Dane's gonna like, hey, can you give me that staff for a second? Can't you just grab it from me holding it? Well, I can, but you know, figured it'd be nice to ask. Hmm. I, I don't know if like she'll like suddenly sense something as soon as like the staff switches hands or not. Well, I guess there's one way to find out. All right. I'll hand it over, I guess. Don't drop it. I've earned this girl's trust, and I'm going to keep it. No, you're not. No, you're, you're right, I'm not. <laughs> so. No, we're, we're betraying the, the demon girl, unfortunately. Um, but needs must. All right, Dane takes a hold of the staff. Okay, you have the staff. And demon girl doesn't notice. Nope. <laughs> Zeus needs to hire better people. <laughs> okay. I'm in I don't think that's the main thing on Zeus's mind at the moment. <laughs> uh, so Dane takes the staff into the building. Okay. Yeah, you find no resistance as you walk into the building, but you do notice that the purple glows a bit brighter. I'm sure it does. All right. Um, can't believe I'm doing this. Dane is going to uh, go around to the front of the statue and stick the, kind of hold the, you know, kind of raise up the gem, trying to level of the eye and just kind of uh, hold the gem kind of in the eye, the eye socket of the statue. All right. As you do that, you feel that arcana that you had been feeling before drain out of the staff and the bright red gem in the end falls into the eye and from the eye comes a a, a red light and the purple on the wall becomes illuminated all of those lines straight away from where the owl was looking expose a like petroglyphic scene of the early world you see what looks like on the le far left uh, a stick figure holding a lightning bolt and another lightning bolt in front of it striking a what looks almost like an exploding pile of little stick figures and then to the right there is a big stick figure standing up and there's what looks like the your familiar constellations that mark you know the sky in your mortal plane above drawn above his head or its head and then down to the right as you continue there is a big line carved across and what looks like bodies with a little like bump of a mountain on top of them and then all the way down at the bottom below everything you see three geometric shapes each about the size of an outstretched hand there is a triangle a circle and a square the center of each is bright yellow and appears to not be the ice of the rest of the room. Okay. So it's almost like a map? Uh, it's a, a story, you know, in Petrograd. Okay. 
All right, so the statue's illuminating this. Um, am I noticing anything else? I mean, otherwise, it's just it's just looking like a kind of like it's acting like a map room right now. Well, no, it's 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 like you walked into like the caves of the scow or something, but it's the you know it's it's all of the the thing the the stick figure throwing the lightning and another one holding the constellations the the round mark that shows the little bump with a bunch of like stick figure bodies below it there's exploding stick figures over to the side you know there's all these things and then at the bottom are those three geometric shapes and they're down right about you know chest height to the average person okay well, I'm guessing the three geometric shapes are representative of the Titans. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying this. I'm outside, so this is a you thing to figure out. Um, you're just hanging out outside. You're not even gonna go in. Yeah, I'm taking my break too. In, in a way, this is my break. Just kind of standing. And chilling for a bit. It's kind of nice. I don't have to be the brains of the operation for a little bit. Alright, fair. Yeah, this is your problem. You figure out. Use those problem-solving skills, Dave. I know you've got intelligence somewhere. (laughs) This is fun, actually. I'm actually really enjoying this. (laughs) All right. Um, no. <laughs> okay. Um. I don't really know what's happening. So <laughs> we uh borrowed a gem that was kind of held in stasis by a magical staff, stuck it in the eye socket of a statue. Uh, the gem. Uh, illuminated the story of uh, illuminated the story and so we're trying to figure out how we can use that to continue our quest uh, I got nothing okay um, so while I'm looking at this what are the gems doing around the wall Um nothing the the ones on the sides outside of the gaze of the the owl appear to just be back to normal and all of that red light is what's just illuminating this in the area that you could previously not see okay um does the statue can i move the statue can i like uh swivel it uh you You make a strength check. Okay. It'd be really nice if I could stop rolling poorly. Uh, No, you cannot swivel it. So it's a 13. (laughs) Yeah, I maintain. You can't swivel it. You, You go up and you grab it and you strain and you struggle and it is just fixed in place as far as you can tell. Do you want Ray to try? Dane? Uh, sure. Eh, that was only a 14. Yeah, same thing. Eh. Um. I do have an idea, but I'm not keen to use it. <laughs> that would be, I turn to an earth elemental, bash the base of the statue apart, and just pick up the statue and move and turn it that way, so it's not like a fixed to the ground. Yeah, let's let's hold off on that. There's there's got to be a yeah. A no, I, way I, to... I don't want to do that because right. it wastes both my wild shapes. Yeah, is the is the gem still attached to the staff? No, it is come oh, off. Right. It is in it's the eye socket. The socket. Okay. Does anybody have a mirror? Um, I don't think so. No, I wouldn't think so either. Unless... 
that's a really good idea. You could fashion a mirror out of the ice, which probably not. Well, are the walls of the cast the building made of ice? Yes. What if you were to torch the ice just a bit so it becomes shiny and slightly reflective? And then the gaze of the statue gets reflected off off that into the uh, outside. If you were to try to attack I don't think we want to necessarily go outside. We just wanted to illuminate different parts of the building. Because it's not illuminating the whole inside of the building. It's only illuminating one part of it. Then still, if you make the walls, if you try to slightly melt the ice, that's the walls of the building, and make it wet and reflective then that would still reflect the light all around the building. That's just an idea. Yeah, no, I, I I like it. I'm just trying to figure out maybe the best way to make it work. Um, yeah. I guess you have something in your bag that you can just polish all this ice into a shiny mirror. Hold on a sec. I gotta think about this. Some wax. Wax on, wax off. Fire on, fire off. Uh, go ahead and, and talk to monks yourselves. How's the temperature doing? That's uh, still quite cold. I uh, figured, yeah. Right. Hmm. Uh, how's she doing? She's still just chilling, doing her thing? Uh, yeah. She's kind of staring off. Oh, I like that for her. Just zoning out, doing her thing. I'm just here to make people appreciate their lives more, because I come along, they're like, oh, geez, your life's awful. I got it kind of good. And I convince them to enjoy themselves a bit more. Because I no longer can, because I'm attached to a group of idiots. And I can't... (laughs) relax in the forest anymore like I used to. Because I'm constantly having to wild shape for them and heal them and cast lightning for them. You know, they're asking me to move the stars here and I don't know, I just kind of miss my days back in the forest with Jeremy. (laughs) I miss Jeremy. You know, me and him just sleep most of the day like cats. Those were the days. (laughs) I'm probably just like saying this like slightly out loud. Like, maybe in Abyssal, just so that she can hear me. Just like, you know, it, it's nice to have, like, felt listened to, you know? Yeah. But you started talking about Jeremy and all that, and you're in a place that, for some reason, seems to have the effect of magnifying your feelings, and you take one point of depression damage. No, not depression damage. I've avoided <laughs> it for so long. Um, Sorry, psychic damage. <laughs> Ray, Ray, do you, do you possibly have a mirror? I don't think so, no. Oh, I have an idea. The moonstone reflects light. Whatever light it absorbs, it'll then put out. So, like, moonlight or sunlight. Would it work with the light on the statue? It might. Why don't you come in and try it? No. Stand and guard. You're gonna have to come back out here and take it from me. I don't know how to use your moonstone. You literally just hold it. (laughs) It's not, it doesn't, like, channel my own magic, it just absorbs light on its own. Alright, alright, fine. So I'll come out and I'll grab the moonstone from you. That's what I've been forgetting to do during healing. I've been forgetting to add the double, like, for healing that the moonstone does. Oops. Oh well. Alright, so I grab the moonstone from Castros, I bring it in, and I hold it in front of that red light for a while. Okay. You do that. Okay, so after it absorbs the red light, then I uh, use the moonstone and I shine that red light kind of around the inside of the rest of the room to see if I can see anything else. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, first off, do a quick arcana check for me. Ugh. I don't want to. Um... It's only an 11. It, well, it's not terrible. I mean, you, you have a little trouble concentrating, getting the moonstone to do what you want, but you're eventually able to get it to turn on. It's 
you can definitely tell it's not the big bright like wide beam that uh Cassius usually gets instead it's a it's a more narrow it's more like a you know small electric torch uh-huh. and you like start looking around the walls and then you realize that this whole room is actually covered in those petroglyphs telling a variety of stories there's you know petroglyphs of a very large stick figure and it's being shown it looks like eating other stick figures and there's uh, many different arcs like big arches that are depicted with different stick figures in different configurations around them um in one point you see there's like two big giant stick figures standing over seven smaller ones and then in the next like thing over from that three of them are are like smashed to bits and then there's only four that remain and just you know random things like that all around the room okay so it's telling more of the story (laughs) yes okay All right, all right. Um, okay. So Dane's gonna let the moonstone light die, and uh, all right. Um, he's gonna go, and he's going to. Well, hold on a sec. So I've got Mason's tools. I'm gonna take out. Uh, like my hammer, my mason's hammer. And I'm going to hit one of the gemstones and see what that does. Okay. Uh, you go over to where there's one of those gemstones on the wall and you give it a mighty whack and you see no change. All right. Well, like she said that the gaze of it would melt the ice that kept the Titans enclosed. Yep. But it's not. I remember the wall that's being illuminated now shows that whole scene and then the three geometric figures at the base with a different type of material than the rest of the room. Try hitting that. Hitting what? The three geometric figures are different. So they're each spread. So they're each spaced out a good arm's length. So do you, what do you, you gonna just grab one? Uh, like try to run through and hit uh, all three. Like, what's the plan? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, Dan's gonna be like, okay, Ray, you stand at this geometric shape. Um, he's going to grab Castros. You're going to actually have to get in here. Fine. And then I'll have Castros stand at the next geometric shape, and then I will stand at the last geometric shape. Okay, so right. which there's a, a triangle, square, and circle. Who's at, who's at each one? I want the triangle. All right. Well, Castros is at the triangle. Uh, I guess Dane will be at the square, and Ray will be at the circle. Got it. All right. So, what do you guys do now that you're standing there? I'm guessing we all grab it at the same time. So, on three, one is yeah. Yeah. One, two, three. Mm. Okay. So, th- three things happen, and so it'll take me just a minute to make sure to get all these correct. So the first one is, let's see, let's start with Dane. Dane, your hand freezes to it and a mighty blast of cold comes out and you can, uh, you attempt to move left and right and you make a deck save at disadvantage. 
I don't think I even need to make a deck save at disadvantage. You never know. Oh, well, yeah. I usually I, I usually I fail the I, I fail the deck saves without it's disadvantage. Insane. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The first one was a 12, and the second one was a 2. Okay. So, it blasts over you, doing 39 cold damage. <gasps> and then, Kasros, mm -hmm. you, you, same thing, a deck save at disadvantage. I rolled an 18 and a 20. <laughs> oh, okay. I rolled an 18 on the dice, plus two, making it a dirty 20, and a nat 20. So I got a dirty 20 on that. Wow. Okay. Well, you take half, which it's 48, so you take 24 lightning damage. Ooh. I'm just excited that it's lightning damage. <laughs> okay. And Ray... You feel your hand melt in, and there is a, like, red orb inside that you place your hand to, and you suddenly feel this, like, energy course through your veins. And as you turn around, you see that the... Owl moves its head and looks down at you and then looks around the room and as it does the entire floor begins to melt. What? About what? I think you're too busy going ow, 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 ow to think about the demon girl. No! <laughs> Wait, okay, so is my hand still stuck or do I have no. to stick in my hand now? No, it, your hand, you are released. You're not stuck. You, uh, but you, you couldn't remove it. You just, you felt that energy pour into you. Okay. And then now, it as you turn around, you're, you're seeing this owl just look around and the, the, the entire floor is melting and the water is getting deeper. Run the demon girl before things get really bad. It's just not her fault that this happened. And I don't want her to get hurt because of our actions. Okay, so you run outside. Yeah. All right. Uh, what do the others do? I don't know. Uh, when you're saying the water is getting deep, how deep is deep? Oh, I mean, it's say up to your shins. I mean, knees if you're Cotton Hill, but you know, shins otherwise. Okay. Um, well, I guess... Yeah, I'm going to kind of head outside too. Uh, to where the area of effect is, is not there anymore. Okay. Ray, what are and you going to do? I mean, probably the same. Okay. Are you going all the way out or are you going to stand in like the doorway? Uh, Dane's gonna stand in the doorway. Okay. So the owl continues to look back and forth, and the water gets deeper and deeper, and after a couple of feet, you start to notice a single toe sticking out. Slice it's like it, the, the, it. the ice is melting away and revealing it. Oh, perfect. Uh, Dane's going to... Um, I'm guessing it's a big toe? Yes. Yeah, Dane's going to jump forward and take a hack at it with his axe. Awesome. Uh, just for fun, roll the hit. Uh, okay. That is a 23 to hit. Oh, yeah. Yay! Yay. Finally rolled, rolled well for us. Rolls yep. when it counted. <laughs> you bury your axe in and drag it across and you see this just sliver of a toenail come peeling off. 
Grab All right. it, pocket it, let's y- run. <laughs> yep, I, Dane grabs it, uh, sticks it in his, shoves it in his pack, and then starts booking it out. Be like, I got it! You- Go! It's getting, it's getting deep. You're, you're having a lot of trouble moving. You're getting your way out. Yeah, but you eventually get over to the edge, and you're able to just pull yourself up from this ever-deepening pool. How's uh, Demon Girl doing? Is it melting out here or just in there? It's just in there, and she does kind of turn for a moment and sees you standing up where you were before, so it doesn't really think anything and just kind of wanders back. It's like, that was fun. I'm going to go back to work now. Maybe you shouldn't. But it is my duty. Did you ask for this duty? It is my birthright. Your birthright? Are you a... Do you want to do this, though? Did you... I heard a, are you a... And then it cut off, and then I heard, do you want to no, do I this? I didn't say Did anything you... there. I was just okay. stopping. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, well, it is my purpose. So, yes, I do want to do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Question. What is your relationship with Zeus other than him being your boss, I guess? Like... He is my father. And your name? Oh, I don't have a name. Ah, what I was legitimate children. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh. All right, so about that time, Dane comes pelting down the stairs and, and is like, "We gotta go! We gotta go! We gotta go! We gotta go now!" She just kind of watches you go and then turns back to Castros. May I have my staff back? Dane has it. Oh, no, I do I have it or does Dane have it still? I think Dane uh, had it last. Yeah, but the staff is is uh I I don't think Dane has it anymore because as soon as the magic left it and the eye the gem smacked back into the uh socket. Um he just staff, dropped it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Dane. <laughs> I had other things on my mind. Well, I probably I probably kept a hold of it up until things started melting. I took the whatever it was, the stinking uh you know, fifty six cold damage. I probably dropped it then. Hey um. Hmm. I trusted you with that staff, you know. He also knew what was going to happen. I didn't think you'd drop it. It's worthless without the gem. You don't know that. Um. I guess what you could do is you could turn into a silver wormling or a great eagle. Fly into the um, building, uh, try and yank the gem out of the owl's eye socket and stick it back on the staff. Good. Which creature do you think has more opposable thumbs? Silver Rimling or a giant eagle? (laughs) Ooh, that's a good one. Well, the eagle would have to use its beak. Uh, The Wormling, I think. Or talons, yeah. The talons would probably work pretty well. The thing is, is is the room big enough for a giant eagle? Because that's a large creature. The wormling's only medium, right? Uh, I believe so, yeah. The wormling would definitely be a better fit for the room and everything that's in it. Wormling could probably grab pretty easy. Okay. I'll be like, yes, one moment, and I'll wild shape into the wormling. 
to go and grab the staff from the flooding room. Uh, just to roll to make sure that doesn't completely fail. That's a 10. <laughs> uh, you find that you have some difficulty here. You go, you know, trying to transform and, like, things aren't quite coming out right. Your arms look too long. Your your wings are a little small. You know, things just didn't quite come out right. But you're you're okay. You're, you're making it. I'll... F- Grab the staff from wherever Dane's butterfingers dropped it. Um, you look around and you see that it uh, it apparently does not float and is several feet underwater now. All right, time to dive. <laughs> I refuse to leave this girl in shambles. All right, I'll I'll dive into the water like a majestic bird and uh, you know try and yoink out the staff. We're gonna okay, aim do the- a. Mouth oh. here. Blame with you're, mouth you're, here. Aim with mouth. Okay, do a survival check since you're doing it like you're trying to catch a wild salmon. Okay. Joke's on you, Murray. Survival check is the same as when I'm a druid. <laughs> nice. Nah, that was a nine. Uh, yeah. You dive down and you can't get it. You came, you, you you like hit the ice bottom and then pushed off and came back up and you missed it. And now you're completely soaked and you're sitting up on the edge, still seeing it sit down there. Yeah. I mean, he's warmling, so he has scales. So water probably doesn't bother him too much. Probably not, but it's still really not pleasant and warm. (laughs) Also, I have damage immunity to cold. (laughs) Oh, nice. Okay. So you're fine then. Yeah. Can I try again, maybe? Sure. That one was worse. <laughs> that was... Uh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, for some reason. It's a good thing you're not in the wild. You would not be eaten today. Apparently not. Alright, let's 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 try to grab the gemstone first and see if that might stop the flooding. But then it might freeze. Again. It would probably freeze. I'm getting the staff! <laughs> Uh, I'll let me try one more time, but with a, like, with the claws this time. I mean, you should right. be able to grab it. That one is a 14. So every time you try and the time in between, it gets deeper and deeper, which increases the difficulty of it. So you spun around, went high, dove down, and... You just couldn't get your talons on it. It was like an inch away from the tippy toe of your talon tip. (sighs) I refuse to let my... (sighs) I'm tired of ruining people's lives, man. (laughs) People who are just chilling. Um, how, How many feet down is it? Oh, now, uh, now you're at a good, like, 19 feet. And there is a whole, like, foot now visible. You can see there's, like, it's getting down there. It's melting out, and then there's some twitching in the toes. One last try. Try all the marbles, I guess. Oh, oh, 19! 19! Yes! Awesome. You dive deeper than you've ever dove in before and you come up triumphant with the staff in your mouth. You're like, yes! Cool. Alright. I rush on over to the statue to try and yoink out the gemstone. <laughs> or do a sleight of claw. Sleight of claw. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be a dex. I don't have any dex modifiers. Oh, uh, no. I do have a dex mod fair. Haha. Ooh, 18. Nice. Yep. You reach in, you claw it out, and you find when it, you claw it out, the gem kind of, you feel the pull. It's in your claw, and you, it's like pulling towards the, the staff as you're holding it, and you notice the ice below you almost immediately starts hardening again. Ah. We did... Caused a giant crisis. 
Finally! Okay, yeah, so... I'll let the... Like, I'll let go of the gemstone so that it flies back into place in the staff. You might want to make sure you're holding it well away from the owl face first, though. So I'll I just like, assumed that was a given. It. Yeah, fair. So it realigns up with the staff, everything looks solid, you know, good as new. Yeah, looks like good a staff a with a gem on the end of it. Alright, I was like, waltz on out as a silver ringling with the staff in beak, or in mouth, and uh, for some reason I keep thinking of, like, beak, but now it's not a beak. Uh, and I just, Honestly, you do have, you know, kind of clawed four, you know, four hands, you could be carrying it in your paws. Nah. I'll bend my head down to offer it to her. He looks at you and kind of nods and takes it and stands. And then after a couple of moments, turns. And is everyone outside right now? You guys are all out on the steps? Yeah. I'm assuming. Okay. She taps her staff and says... You do not belong. Everything about you is wrong. There is another aspect of me dealing with another one of you who also does not belong. This cannot be. And she picks her staff up and starts to swirl it around, like making a like a cyclone motion. And you guys feel your bodies begin to float and off in the distance, you hear a, a, just a, a little sound at first. And then after a moment, she looks and says, The other one is coming. You are all to be expelled. And you hear, yes. So flying... First, over the top of you, you hear, via the Doppler effect, the little... (laughs) (laughs) And then you guys rip off upwards into the sky, swirling through inky blackness. In the distance of your vision, stars begin to appear and then blur as you move past them as you're accelerating faster and faster you feel the the chill of Tartarus kind of fall off of you, almost like like you need water drying from a bath. It's just like leaving your body. And eventually you move so quickly that you realize it's getting a little hard to breathe and you lose consciousness. But after some time, you awake. The sounds and smells are familiar it's like home creeping its way into your waking mind but then your eyes open and you realize you're in kind of a a pen that's out back of a tavern and inside you can hear what sounds like alpha chattering away about gond Ah. Dane looks around and does does this tavern look familiar? Yes, it is the tavern in Sigil. You know it well. Oh, perfect. Dane's like looks around, re- recognizes it, then just kind of slumps back and goes, "Well, that was a hell of a thing." Yeah, sure was. We're not back in time again, are we? Or is it, we're just here. We're just in the in same Sigil. time. Yeah, we're just in Sigil. Just in Sigil. It was Thank a short, shortcut. Yeah. So well, she kind of helped us out. In so kind of a kind of a rough trip, but yeah, everything turned out very well. And we didn't leave her with nothing like we normally do. <laughs> right. I hope she's doing well. Uh, unnamed so, child. On that note, uh, Dane kind of turns to Castros and says, uh, "Well." Good job there, Castros. You really kind of saved the day there. You uh, averted us from disaster. Um, 
Come on, let's go into the tavern. I'll buy you a water. Uh, I think I need a beer. Make it a juice and you got a deal. A mocktail, if you will. A good berry mocktail. <laughs> there you go. Right? Yeah. Right? I mean, I deserve more than a water for that. Well, but I know you don't drink alcohol, so. I know. So. Exactly. So juice. All right. So we, uh, we tromp into the tavern to uh, meet back up with Alpha. Um, Ray, I'm guessing you're going to follow us. Yep, I'm getting a drink. <laughs> Ray's yeah. going to belly up to the bar immediately as well. You, as you walk your way across, you do momentarily catch Alpha, who waves and, hello, but goes immediately back to conversing with the few people who he actually was able to get to listen to him. Right. <laughs> and they're probably trying to edge away from him as he's talking to them. Well, he's got at least one or two that are actually paying, you know, relatively close attention, which is unusual, but yeah, something better at it. Yeah, something seems a little different. But you guys have a really nice uh, evening. Yeah. You're sitting, you're decompressing, and you feel accomplished you feel more skillful and i think because i can't remember when the last time we did it but i think it's appropriate given all you've been through to level up one more time oh cool i mean it wasn't really that long ago no it wasn't too long ago but we've we've been through some stuff so well and on top of that i had missed it for a long time so i wanted to play a little catch up oh okay perfect all Yay. right, sounds great. It was useful. You you were. I mean, that was that was actually really brilliant. The whole idea of getting the staff back and prying the eyeball out of the statue. So I know this was relatively a uh, short run, but you guys did so well and getting through it. And I, I there's not much I feel like we should do without getting Alpha back. So yeah. I agree. I f- yeah. Cool. I felt it would be appropriate to pick up next time with you guys all in the tavern in Sigil. You can go from there with doing your weapons and everything else. Perfect. Sounds great. Whoop. Yay. <laughs> all right. Cool. I'm just really happy we didn't ruin somebody else's life again. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. That, that was my main goal. Dane, Dane would have abandoned her, so you know, that was that was pretty smart there. Uh, gotta say, Demon Girl didn't have a whole lot of personality. She wasn't supposed to. She was supposed to be one aspect of many. So there's, um, I, I can't, and the, I couldn't remember the name, and I still can't. But it, there's this story. It's kind of like how Poseidon had a thousand daughters, one for every river. Uh, but it, there's someone about Zeus that has the like this child that has all these aspects, so is in multiple places at once. So, oh, okay. What I, I what I was going off of was this idea of okay, you're in this place where these titans are imprisoned, and there, this is just one titan. And so she's one aspect of herself that is guarding one of them. And so there's like, you know, maybe a hundred or something spread around all aspects of the same person. Oh, no wonder she was distracted. Yeah. I get an eighth level spell slot. Nice. This is fun. Jane's probably going to get a rock. Uh, already I'm seeing that three of these uh, spell titles are uh, Control Weather, Earthquake, and Tsunami. Awesome. Uh, but the first one's called Animal Chips. I'm just gonna look it up! I love new spells. Okay. Especially because for some reason the really powerful spells don't even require like many material components. And that's nice. Nice. Ooh, with animal shapes, I can turn you guys into animals, too. Concentration for up to 24 hours, and it can be any the number of you. I can, that's, 
That's probably gonna suck. Knowing Castros is gonna randomly turn us into like pigs or something. I probably like won't that. do that because you guys kind of seem better when you're not in, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but I can change you into a, cha- a creature of challenge rating four or lower. Four is pretty good. Four is pretty good. I mean, the elementals are challenge rating five, so. Just saying, if you were interested. Well, something to think about. If we ever need to, like, fly or swim or something. Yeah. I think I'm actually a bit behind. So, like, my number of spells that I have known is equal to my druid level plus my wisdom. And I think I actually know fewer spells than I can have learned. So I could probably learn a couple eight level spells. I just only have the one spell slot for them. Gotcha. Well, I think you can change that out every long rest. Yeah. Okay. They're already kind of at a spot where I'd like them to stay. Like, the only thing I would do would be, like, get rid of some of the cantrip stuff, but it doesn't really affect the number of spells anyways. I mean, I could get rid of, like, Thunder Wave. Entangle I don't really use anymore. But the rest are kind of essential, so... You know... Trying to see. Did I like any of the other 7th level spells? No, not really. Because I'm like thinking, like, I only have one 7th level spell. But I didn't really like any of the other ones. There's only 5 in that category, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Let's look through. I always like looking at new spells. It's like, oh, the the possibilities. Ah. And I never use them, because, like, we all, we're always find something that, like, isn't worth it. So like I said like all these high powered spells I never use. Like I have Firestorm learned and I've never I don't think I've ever been able like had the opportunity to use it. <laughs> well you probably could have used it when we were fighting that one village when they were trying to cook me. Yeah, that would have been good. This has been an Azentuary LLC production. Find us online at A-Z-E-N-T-U-A-R-Y dot com for character bios, merchandise, Patreon, and more. Thank you for listening.